Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at The Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about the new cards added in the Way of the Witcher expansion. And today, we're gonna be talking about the Squiatel cards that have been added. So the 10 Squiatel cards added in the Way of the Witcher expansion. Um, let's dive right in. So here they are, the 10 Squiatel Way of the Witcher editions. Um, some very, very cool cards, mainly focusing on Witchers, because um, this expansion, as the name uh, suggests, focuses on witchers and monsters alike. So we just talked about monsters in the previous video, you can check that out if you want to. And as with that video, I'm gonna just give my opinion, my ideas about these cards. Uh, but that's just the start of the discussion. If you want to talk about this further, don't hesitate to put something in the comment section and we can just discuss the options of these cards. This is just the beginning of this expansion. So let's take a look at the first card, the Cat Witcher Adept. So standard, not too much to say about this. Uh, it's one of the younger Witcher cards, four provisions, three power. And basically if you put it on the melee row, you can give bleeding to a unit equal, uh, an enemy unit equal to the amount of units on that row. Or if you put it on the ranged row, give vitality to one of your own units equal to the amount of units on that row. So a good uh, variety between giving either bleeding or vitality, so defending or attacking. Um, and especially with some of the other cards, it uh, could be yeah, there could be some nice synergy, especially with something like the Hammer Drive giving vitality to that amount could uh, just bypass you having to, to use other cards. But I think there's a few nature cards that actually fit this uh, role better. So I don't think it will see much play aside from maybe the old uh, completely Squiretail Witcher focus deck. Um, but still, it's good value for what it does. Um, but there are other cards that do this as well and more guaranteed. So I'm not sure that it will see that much play. Then, making a bomb a special card and another bomb, because we haven't seen a lot of bombs before. Move an enemy unit to the other row, give it bleeding for four, and if it's the only unit on that row, uh, damage it by four instead. So no bleeding, but damage it by four instead. With the movement, it actually fits very well in what CDPR tries to do with this expansion in Squiretail specifically, because most of the cards will be centered around either filling up rows or just moving units around. So that's why the cat uh, student, the cat witcher student, was actually using the fact that there needs to be as many units as possible on that row. This kind of works into that as well, moving an enemy unit away. And if it's the only unit there, then you just uh, damage it by four, possibly destroying it. Um, it is a good four hit card. Um, but it's gonna have to be used early to get that damage because otherwise the rows will be filled up too much unless you can shuffle that around of course, but I think there are better options than this again uh, not the best cards, uh, but of course we're still looking at four provision cards So uh, let's move that a, a bit up because uh, they get more interesting then Again, with the row filling effect, the Cat Witcher Mentor starts at one power, but on deploy, he boosts himself by the number of cards on this row. If you have Adrenaline 4, so Adrenaline, again, I explained this in the previous video, but Adrenaline triggers if you match the amount that is presented right next to it with the amount of cards in your hand or less. So Adrenaline 4 means that it will trigger if you have four cards or less in your hand. So, and the Cat Witcher Mentor can be the fifth card because that removes, uh, goes away from your hand. So you have four cards left. Uh, and that triggers whenever a card appears in this row, boosts self by one. So that only triggers if you only have four cards or less in your hand, which is a good, um, I mean, a, a good substitute, I, I suppose. So if you have a full row, that means that the Mentor goes up to nine. And then if you shuffle units around, I don't know if appears actually means that if it goes into that row by moving, he boosts himself by one as well. I'm assuming that is the case. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, I need to check that out if that actually is the case. But it's a good engine, uh, a late game engine that you can use uh, that synergizes very well with movement abilities. Then up next is the Saboteur, so the Cat Witcher Saboteur. On deploy, move an enemy unit to the leftmost position on its row and damage it by one for every card it passed. So if there are three units on that row, you pick the rightmost unit, it will pass two units, so you damage it by two. 
and it also moved. So if you have any movement reactive abilities like the uh, Broccolon Sentinel, for example, uh, you might even damage it further. But the larger the row, again, the bigger the effect of the Saboteur. Something that your opponent can work around, of course, by not having too many units on the field. But still, it's a very, very cool uh, addition to the movement based abilities. Then the normal Cat Witcher, the fully fledged Cat Witcher, at the end of your turn moves self to the other row and damage a random enemy on the opposite row by one. Uh, so that's basically a dancing card, I like to call that shuffling cards. Um, and if you have four cards or less, you damage that random enemy by two instead. So a solid engine, but I think I felt, because I was building a deck with these cards, and I felt like the uh, existing elf that basically does the same thing, so that does two damage on the ploy and then damages the random enemy every time he moves, is better. Although this one does it on his own. The Cat Witcher is autonomous, so he doesn't need to be moved by something else. He moves himself. So there's a, a balance there. I think uh, for consistency's sake, this is better because you don't need to move him yourself. He does that automatically and also deals two damage um, by the end of the, the round. So, yeah, this might actually be better the more that I think about it because it's completely autonomous. You don't need to move him yourself. He does, on the other hand, not get an effect if you move him yourself, which is something the elf does. Um, so yeah, something that we'll have to try out to see in which cases this is better than the uh, the elven variety of this card. Then we get Gital, um, another a cat witcher. I think this is the guy that you can meet in the witcher tree that kills an entire village. Judging from the card art, this is that, right? Murder me just to save a few crowns. Yeah, he's definitely that character. Because uh, you can also see the girl that Geralt meets that survives the uh, the slaughter of Gaetan. Um, but deploy, move the other cards from this row to the other row. So you can basically move your entire row to the other row and you damage a random enemy unit for each card moved by one. So that um, I've asked this internally uh, at CDPR and they confirmed that the damage from Gaetal is in one damage tick. So each damage that he does is one damage randomly to a different unit or to the same unit, but it's, it's random. So it just fires off uh, basically like um, Relentless uh, Fury. Reckless Fury. Reckless Fury. It's Reckless Fury, not Relentless Fury. Uh, so, yeah, pretty good card, especially since he starts at 5 power. If you have a full row that goes up to 13 again, but for 7 provisions, and there's no other effect for this card. I think there are better cards, but it is a good burst uh, if you have a full row. Uh, especially if most of those cards that you moved also have an ability that trigger on the movement. It could be very, very powerful if played at the right time, which is, I think, fitting for this expansion. There's a lot of cards that can be very strong under the right circumstances, basically as witches themselves. They're really good uh, tools for the job, for monster slaying, but they need to be used, um, well, efficiently. On to the next one. We get Brian. Um, he actually has another very cool ability. So he basically destroys the rightmost unit on a row of your choice, but under the condition there's at least five units there. You can move units around, and if I'm not mistaken, if you move a unit from one row to the other, he actually also immediately goes to the rightmost side. So you can move a unit to the other row from your opponent, and have it be positioned perfectly to be completely destroyed by Bran. Because um, on Adrenaline 3, so 3 cards or less in your hand, he destroys the unit on uh, the rightmost unit on the enemy row with at least 3 units instead. So the requirement gets lower the further you get into the round, which is kind of counterintuitive because of course there's going to be more units by the end of the round that are going to be in the beginning, unless you've been killing everything. Uh, but still, it's a destroy card, it's tall removal in Scoia'tael which is a very big deal to me. Because um, basically, when you play against Squirtel and you see that it's Devotion, you know that you shouldn't be too scared of Tall Removal. There's only a few cards that can actually do something. Um, but this, this is a Destroy card, um, which kind of changes the faction on its own, which is uh, really, really cool. Um, and then we get the location for Squirtel, which is Stiga Castle, of course. Uh, if anybody has uh, read the books, you know what Stigger Castle is. And again, 
it's the same deal here. So you get resilience, so you can keep this artifact going on to the next round. Uh, it has a deploy ability, which basically allows you to spawn and play one of the bronze witches that we just talked about. And then the order ability of Sticker Castle is that you move three allied units to the other row. Again, synchronizing very well with those movement abilities. Put that on a few uh, fancy cards, the Alvin movement cards or something else, uh, like the Tree and Boar, and you can set them up to do even more damage. But yeah, very cool that we finally have Sticker Castle in the... Uh, Oh, in Gwent. Then, uh, I think this is a fan favorite already, even though we just uh, just started with this expansion. But seven power, the saber tooth tiger. Um, very very cool ability. So, uh, if you play the saber tooth tiger, you can immediately transform it into the saber tooth tiger stealth. Um, that is an artifact, so it can't be destroyed by just damaging it. And at the start of your turn, you can damage all enemy units that are alone on their row by two. By activating that. So it, it activates on its own. So basically, you play the tiger, uh, transform it into the artifact. And then at the start of your next turn, you automatically damage all enemy units that are alone on their row by two. So the earlier that you play this, the easier the damage that you're gonna get. Because you can move at the next start, so it transforms back to the tiger, you get that seven point uh, unit back, but I think it transforms back into a base version of the tiger. So meaning that you can use that order ability again. Swap that around again, and you can already see the cycle that you're going through with the saber tooth tiger. Um, which is a really cool thing. Uh, there's another card that does this. Uh, I think it's a tree ant mantis that also changes from an artifact to a monster. Um, and it's cool that this is continued in Squiretel. It's a really cool new type of, uh, well, not archetype, but it's only two cards, but still, it's a really cool concept. And then we get, of course, the big unit in the Squiretel faction, the 12th provision Witcher, Gezras of Leda. Um, when you play, uh, when he is on the melee row at the end of your turn, you move him to the ranged row automatically and you boost a random allied unit on that row by one. If you're on the ranged row, you do the opposite, but damage a random enemy unit on the opposite row by one. But starting from Adrenaline Tree, so if you play um, Gezras, F, if you only have four cards in your hand, so you play him as that four card, um, he does the same thing. But he affects the entire row every time. So if you move from the melee to the ranged row, you boost all your units on that row by one. If you go from the ranged row to the melee row, you damage all the opposing units by one. This is amazing. Um, especially against swarm decks, this, this can just clear the board in a few turns. Um, because of the immense power of this guy. You can, even if you prefer to just damage the other row, you can just move him back to the range row and then have him do that ability automatically and just reset him every time to the range row to keep damaging that melee row. Um, the only thing that limits this is that of course you only damage the melee row and you only boost your range row. So that's the only effect. But imagine playing this card through the new Geralt Quen card. We'll talk about him later. Uh, but you immediately give him a shield as well. Um, Keep making him more protected to uh, well from every any other effect that might be hitting him, and this yeah I really like this card. This might be from all the factions overall my favorite card, just because of the look of the card itself and the ability. Because I've been trying, I don't know how long it's been. I probably put it on screen right now, but the first time I tried to make a proper movement based Quietel deck, I think it's been two years. Um, but I've been trying to make this work for a long time and I feel like this is the card that I needed. The card that we all needed to make this uh, archetype work in Squiretel. And I'm going to try and prove this in one of my uh, deck guides, upcoming deck guides. And uh, you'll see the full power of the new and improved Squiretel shuffle. Because it's coming. It's coming. Prepare for that. But um, that's the final card in the Squiretel editions for uh, the Way of the Witcher expansion. Um, 
What do you guys think about these cards? Is it what you expected? Is it what you wanted? Do you like the new movement card abilities? Because it's basically all of that. Um, let me know in the comment section. We can discuss these cards further and we can share tactics among each other because that's what we're here for after all. We're helping each other out. So thank you guys enormously for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Um, well, the next Quantech episode where we'll talk about the Syndicate cards. So uh, thank you enormously for watching and see you in the next episode of Quantech. Goodbye.